getting questions to your, getting answers to your immigration questions. All right, let's go to Debbie in Pensacola, Florida. Debbie. Hi, Brad. How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? I'm doing fine. Thank you for everything that you're doing. My pleasure. So I had a few questions I wanted to ask. Yes. Um, uh, my husband and I, we went on an interview. It's almost been 18 months now, but um, we have had some issues over the course of the time, and we're now separated. Uh -huh. and I wanted to file a VAWA case. Okay. I was wondering um, if I file a VAWA case with my and my current EAD card expire, um, would I still be able to renew that under the C9 category, or how would I go about doing that? All right. So as long as your adjustment hasn't been denied yet, you can file a VAWA and you can renew your work permit under the C9 category. When you file your VAWA, when you get your receipt notice on the VAWA, what you should do is send the receipt notice because the VAWA may be in a different office than your pending adjustment. And you know, with immigration, the left don't know the right and vice versa, even though it's the same agency. So what you would do is after you get your receipt notice on the VAWA, renew your work permit no matter what, whether you have the receipt notice or not, just renew it because you, okay. you have a pending adjustment, you're entitled to renew it, end of story. When you get the VAWA receipt notice back that they've received your VAWA, make a photocopy of it and make a photocopy of your receipt notice for your I-45 and send a letter to whatever office the I-45 is at now and say, you know, I'm, you know, I'm paraphrasing. By the way, you know, you're not going to say it this way, but basically you can say, by the way, I'm converting my case from a, from a bona fide marriage case to a VAWA case. I'm an abused spouse. Please, you know, please, you know, okay. correct your records or whatever you want to say. And then that would automatically convert your uh, pending adjustment based on a bona fide marriage to a VAWA. They'll keep the whole case open, waiting on the final VAWA case. Okay. Um, also, another question: Do I need to get um, affidavits from um, friends and families about my relationship with them? It or every every case is different. It depends on how you're going to prove the abuse. So, you know, for example, you know, if your husband's arrested for domestic violence, that proves it, okay? If okay. you're, you know, you know, hospitalized because of domestic violence, that proves it. You don't need any affidavit from anybody. If you have a very strong, credible story about what happened, maybe you need an affidavit, maybe you don't. Uh, if you're doing it all based on emo extreme emotional abuse, you may, you may not need something from somebody else. It depends on how strong your story is and how believable your story is and how detailed your story is. Sometimes on emotional abuse cases, when you don't have that specific, um, you know, documentary evidence, here's the arrest of my husband or my spouse, here's my hospital record or my medical record, or here is, right. here is my, you know, two years of therapy getting over his emotional abuse, uh, here's all the records. Right. You know, if you don't have any of that, sometimes an affidavit corroborating what you're saying is helpful. Okay, so in my case now, I'm currently going to counseling. So would that um, be a, a source where I wouldn't have to um, provide affidavits? It, it, well, a counselor's going to, you know, write a report. Uh, it depends on what, again, every case is so specific. So for me okay. to say you need it, you don't, unless I actually read what's going on and know what's going on, I couldn't tell you, you know, it's like going to a trial attorney and saying, you know, um, I, you know, I got into a car accident and uh, uh, the police didn't come. I'm going to testify about the car accident. Do I need other people to testify? I don't know what you're going to testify about yet. So maybe yes, maybe no, you know, so it depends. Okay. Thank you so much, Brad. All right. But um, I, if you want, I can review everything and let you know, but outside that, it's I couldn't tell you, you know, 100% yes, you need this or no, you don't need that. Because there's no, every case is so specific to that person. Okay. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Let's go to Sammy in Baltimore. Sammy. Yeah. Um, how are you doing? Good. Brad? How you doing? Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, I have uh, three questions, yep. please. Um, I have a pending VAWA, so 
um, it's like it's taking a long time and they are requesting a lot from me. So my wife wants me to withdraw it so that she can file for me. So I'm just wondering if they're gonna, if it's gonna be any problem. Let me ask you a question. Um, Let me ask you a question. You said your wife? I mean, we're about to get married. Okay, fine. Because once you get, okay. Because once you get married, that ends your VAWA case. Yeah. So it's, you don't even, in other words, you get married, do you have a pending adjustment through this VAWA or it's just a VAWA? Yeah, I have a, a pending, like, I just have a VAWA. Okay. Like, I filed all right, so you wouldn't, you wouldn't, all right. So what you, you didn't file an I-45. So then I, you did or did I not? Filed, I I filed I-485. You did. Okay. So first of all, once you get married, that ends your VAWA case unless the I-360 is approved and it doesn't seem like it is. So, so I don't need to send them a letter. You, to do, tell them. You, you need to send them a letter that you've gotten married and you want to withdraw your adjustment and file a new one. You would need to do that. Okay, but had you not filed an adjustment, it would just be denied by operation of law. Okay, so my second question is this. So um, my wife did not end, she earned only 18,000 um, from her task 2020. So now my roommates want to sponsor us, but the task she have, um, the task she had this year um, is only like 25,000, um, like 30,000, but he, he it's not going to be enough. It's not going to be enough. Not going to be enough. You're going to need somebody else. Oh, uh, all right. So look, like, look, look for somebody who earns more money. Gonna, it depends on how so many like people there. Yeah, that's going to sounds like better to me. Yeah, it's like three of us right yeah. now. I mean, thirty thousand may be enough if it's just you, your roommate, and your spouse. That's going to be enough. Yes. Under it's more than one hundred twenty-five percent above the poverty level, but you're just like right there. You know, I'd like you to be a little higher if possible. Okay, so for, sorry for the last question. So if we yeah. fly right now, how long do you think I'll be able to get a uh, work permit and green card? Uh, like well, your work, month, permit will be, your work permit will be five, six months and your green card will be a little over a year. Thanks for watching. For more Bradshaw Live, like and subscribe to our YouTube channel.